Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on Alice's Tea Time or Time for Tea. I keep saying that backwards. <laughs> anyway, we are going to get started on this page and um, we're going, I'm going to go back and forth between the designer paper and um, the interactive elements partly because I'm going to do an inset for my first flap and I find that it's easier to go ahead and put down that color strip first rather than try to squish it under the flap after I install the flap. So the first thing we're going to do is add um, a half inch strip on either side. It's going to be in blue. This comes from the 12 by 12 uh, Patterns and Solids pack. Am I doing that right? No, sorry. You're going to um, install this strip. This strip is going to be first. The dark blue one is going to be next to it. So this comes from the 12 by 12 cut apart page. So you're going to have one on each side. I'm glad I paused for a second before I um, installed the wrong one. It, it still would have worked, but this is actually what I had planned. Oh, it doesn't look like I trimmed this one. So let me trim that down real quick. So, um, Happy New Year, everybody. I have to share some exciting news. Um, I, you know I've been a big fan of uh, Caterpillar um, for a long, long time, um, and I've probably had mine just under 10 years, but it was time to uh, look at replacing it or uh, using something different, and I decided to go with the Roto Trim, which I um, became familiar with because that's what Julie uses. Oh my gosh, I love that paper trimmer. I got it for Christmas for my husband because he's a sweetheart. He also got me some additional studio lighting and some um, a new um, stand for my camera, which I haven't used yet, but I'm excited to get that um, my studio rearranged so that I can take better advantage of both of those things. So I'm very excited. So it was a big, big year for me and my craft supplies and tools. So um, that trimmer is just so lovely. It's a little more expensive than the Caterpillar, but I really like it. You won't find it in craft stores. And when I say Rota trim, I think it's R-O-T-A. I should look at that. And it's one word, T-R-I-M. It's a great... Uh, paper cutter. It's so smooth. Now, if you want to cut multiple sheets, I would not recommend this trimmer. Multiple sheets at a time, I mean. And if you need a trimmer that allows you to, to trim off very small pieces on a short piece of paper, it's not the right trimmer. So as a result, I'm not going to get rid of my Caterpillar Pro because I can hold something as small as an inch in my paper trimmer. The, the, um, Caterpillar, but not with this new one, which, I mean, I don't make that many small cuts, but it's still nice to have a trimmer that does it. So anyways, exciting. For me, anyway. It's been a long time coming. Um, uh, this Alice um, album is, is a lot of fun. I've got some um, pretty fun uh, interactive pages. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm just trying to see that they're both going the same direction. I don't know that you're going to notice much after I get everything in the in the middle put in. Okay. Okay, so as I said, we're going to put these strips in and then we're going to put in a left and right flap. So the left and right flap that we're going to install is not this one. It's this one four. Those are inserts. Here we go. Four and seven eighths, four and seven eighths by eight, four and seven eighths by eight. You're going to score a half inch on the four and seven eighths inch side, and it's going to get installed like that, like so. Okay, so I'm going to place, I'm going to use some tape to help hold my um, project in place, and I'm going to put it this way, and I'm going to use the grid on my mat to help me place um, these flaps. I'm going to just put some temporary tape, removable tape is what it is, on either side. You could also put a, a tick mark, 
Um, there's a number of things that you can do. I find this works pretty good. Let's get my pick tool. I'm going to do a quick dry fit, make sure that the flap is not wider than the panel it's going on. It is not, so we're good to go. Okay. So I'm here's the um, the beginning. I'm going to go two squares up. That's a half inch right there. So you're going to see we're going to partially cover. Um, this strip. There we go. Okay, one side's in. Now we're going to flip it over, find that uh, grid mark, press it into place, do the same thing on this side. There we go. There it is. It's lovely. Lift it up. There we go. The next step is there's a pocket that goes on here. Sorry for all the paper shuffling, but there's just a lot of components. So this pocket is um, going to go with the um, sealed in or the scored end toward the center of the page, like so. So what goes in the pocket is going to go this way. And then we're going to put a flap over it to hold everything in place. So these are three and one quarter. Let me double check my measurements. Yes, three and one quarter by nine. Three and one quarter by nine. Score a half inch on the three and one quarter side. Rotate it 45 degrees. Score a half inch and eight and a half. And I'll dry fit this as well. Let me get some contrast paper in here that will help us see what we're doing. Okay, it looks good. See my little math scribbles here. <laughs> Sometimes I uh, have to think things out on paper before I start cutting. Okay, so I had mentioned in one of the videos before, but I'm going to mention it again. I highly recommend that you kind of um, spend a little time watching the walkthrough, and then um, I would recommend watching, you know, the first part of these videos, at least where the interactive elements go in, um, before you start cutting your paper, because the cut list is, even though I give you all the measurements, because there's two, there's a total of four flaps on this page, it can get a little confusing as to which flap goes where. So the way I'm going to list it in the cut list is the order in which I install it. Um, they are different sizes, so you'll know the larger size gets attached to the base, and then the, um, the next flap is gonna get actually installed here, and I, I'm gonna, I don't know how I'm going to differentiate that in the cut list. I'm, I mean, the size is a differentiator, but I want to call it something different. So I may call this the bottom flap and the top flap. I haven't decided, but um, take some time and watch it um, so you make sure that you're putting it in in the order um, of the video. That needs to come over a little bit. See if I can't get that to lift. Let's get my painter spatula out. See if I can't get that to lift without causing too much damage. It needs to shift over a little. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. They go a long way to helping. It's a very helpful tool because it's so thin. I'm gonna turn it around this way so I can see these corners, which I should have done in the first place. Okay, there we go. So I won't make that mistake on this side. I'm bringing those two corner, corners to, to me. And again, this is three and a quarter by nine, three and a quarter by nine. On the three and a quarter inch side, you're gonna score a half inch, that's it. Then you're gonna rotate it 45 degrees, score a half inch and eight and a half inches, and then you get your pocket. It's 
so quiet around here the last couple of days. It's really kind of nice. You know, not, not the usual yard maintenance sounds and all that stuff. I hope you guys are having a good new year. So the next project up is Come One, Come All. So I'll be starting that one soon. I've already got some great ideas for it. Um, it's going to be kind of unique because I just feel like it's time to do another unique project. So it's not exactly going to be an explosion box, but it's going to it's going to be different. So I hope you guys enjoy that. It's keeping with the sort of big top theme. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is install a flap on top of this one. So here's our the base flap. Now we're going to have another flap. It's going to go right on top. It's going to open the same way. And we're installing it this way so that when it's closed, everything in the pocket stays in place. So the first thing we're going to do before we install a flap is we're going to add this decorative strip right here on either side, right next to the edge. Did I ink this? No, I didn't. Let me do that real quick. Um, I'm using mahogany. It's my go-to color. Um, they change these every couple of years, but I always lean toward the darkest one because I don't distress in. I just knock off the white core. So if you like to distress in, I would recommend going lighter. This is very dark. And I only do it when I'm installing, mm, that's not true. I was gonna say I only do it when I'm installing on black, but I do it on cream sometimes too. I never do it on white. If I've got a white base, I don't bother with a white core because there's already white from the base coming through. Okay, we need a little glue. This, oh, I didn't mention it. This one is just cut to size based on um, the strip as it's defined in the 12 by 12. This is a half inch strip right here that I cut. And we're actually going to cover a quarter inch of it because what we want exposed when we're done is a quarter inch of this blue. Hopefully that all comes together for you. So it's going to go right here and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. And there we go. Okay, so the top flap, or the small flap, however you wanna look at it, is four and a quarter by eight, four and a quarter by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the four and a quarter inch side, and it's gonna get installed basically from this edge to this edge, we're going to center the top flap, which is going to come in a quarter inch here and should leave a quarter inch exposed on the side. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to see because that's black and so is this. So basically we're looking to center it so you can see that it doesn't come all the way to the edge on either side. So what I think I'm going to do is find the center of both of these and then line it up that way. So, there's my center, it's two and one eighth. Okay, it looks like two. Two and seven sixteenths, which is, is very tight, right? But I think that's what it is. Yeah, two and seven sixteenths. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Yeah, it's hard because my eye keeps jumping to the outside instead of here. Yep, that's it. Okay, I'm going to find the center of this way. Two. Oh, 
No, I had that wrong. It's going to be 2 and 3 sixteenths. 2 and 3 sixteenths. Sorry about that. Anyway, find the middle either way you can. Any way you can. And that's where we're, go that's where we're going for. So that's 2 and 1 eighth. Yep. I think I marked it right and set it wrong. But let's double check before we... Three sixteenths. Sorry about the confusion. Set that aside now. I need to find my center line here. just going to line up these tick marks and again it's going to open the same way so it's going to open open oh, let's dry fit make sure I don't need to make it any smaller oh, looks good I'm loving my new trimmer guys Oh, I can see. I, this strip went in crooked. Can't change it now. It's glued, so it's narrower here than it is down here, and that's why this looks like it's coming in slightly. Half-inch strips or anything smaller than a half-inch are a little difficult to, to put in because once you add the glue, then they become a little... They're easier to adapt to a shape um, and less likely to go in straight. So. It um, takes a little patience to put in the straight one, or to put in half inch or smaller strips. They make for a beautiful statement, but it's very easy for them to get wavy uh, and not go in straight. If this was a pattern, it would have been more forgiving visually. It would have been harder to see. Okay, so we're going to go with finding the center line for both. Starting with the flap because it was the easier of the two. Just knock this out. And it turns out that this is two and one eighth. Nope, that's not right. It's one and seven eighths. Is the center one and seven eighths is the center. This should be the same as the previously measured two and a quarter. Okay, there we go. Now this is going to get installed on the left hand side, open the same direction as this, but this is flap is what's going to keep everything inside our pocket. Hopefully I did a better job on this strip. <laughs> We're going to find out. <laughs> Once we get everything else in, it's not going to be obvious because there's a lot going on on this page. to me. Okay. Oh wait a minute, that's off. Something's off. That's not center. I can see it. Yeah. 
Now it should be right. There we go. Yay! So we have base flap, top flap, base flap pocket. Now, what's next? Another pocket. <laughs> so the fun thing about this album is it's going to have a lot of different inserts and places to stash stuff. So I kind of like that. These pockets are going to go on the top flap and they fit um, the width of the flap. So they're just going to go flush with these edges. Now these pockets are four and three quarters across, four and a half inches deep, four and three quarters by four and a half inches. You're going to score a half inch and four and a quarter along the four and three quarter inch side, rotate it 45 degrees, score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. This one you pay attention to because it's just a little bit narrower than it is tall. So it's easy to accidentally rotate it differently. So lay it into your um, scoreboard, four and three quarters across the top, score a half inch, four and a quarter. Okay, once you close those in, those are the two sides. Rotate it 45 degrees and do the half inch on the four and a half inch side. I'm trying to be better at being very clear on pockets that are close to square because it's very easy um, to get them um, made incorrectly. M most of the pockets are very rectangular, so it's pretty obvious which sides get two scores and which side gets one score. When it's close to square, I'll just try to take a few more minutes and um, hopefully get you guys on track. I'm going to use this white paper so that I can better see my edges. Actually, I'm going to start the install from this side and go that way. And here's why. And I talked about this because we built this page. We're going to build this page one more time. Is This has to open, so I want to make sure that this score line doesn't interfere with this score line when I, when I go to open it. So if I have any excess pocket, I want it to go toward the center and not towards the flap score line where we have mobility. Okay, and it turns out that it's it's right on. But if I had if it had been just a smidge off, even under a one sixteenth of an inch off, I don't want it running in to this edge because this edge is the edge that's moving. This is more of the static side. Okay, we're going to do that one more time and then on this side we're just going to choose this score line and go toward the center of the page. Oh look, I forgot some tape. <laughs> I think I want to close the bottom of the pocket. <laughs> Otherwise it's really not a pocket. <laughs> Here we go. My handy dandy tape tear tool which I cannot live without. Uh, the longer I craft, the harder, uh, the more arthritic, the more I'm aware of my arthritis in my hands. And trying to pick up and put down scissors is just absolutely out of the question at this point. They just get stuck on my fingers and won't let go. So that saved me a lot of trouble and stress on my hands. And we have them in stock. They come in this color and also in clear. And I have both. I use this one here, and then when I'm, if I ever go to a craft retreat again, that's in my clear to go bag. Let's see how it did. Look, that looks very beautiful, right? Good job. You can do it. Okay, now I'm gonna share with you real quick a couple other measurements. And the first one is going to be, actually the first one's gonna be for this pocket insert. So you're gonna have two of these. These are three and a half by seven and a half. Three and a half by seven and a half. Nice, easy, straightforward. Now we're gonna have inserts for these two pockets and these are seven and three quarters seven and three quarters, a little bit wider by seven and a half, same height. Okay, they're gonna go in here. Okay, now I'm gonna take a break, organize some of my papers that we're ready to lay in, and then also we're gonna install the magnets when I get back. Be back soon. 
Hey everyone, I'm back. I've got some of the papers organized uh, to get started here. So the first thing um, I'd like to do is place our magnets that are going to hold the top flaps closed. So let me find my thick tape. Here it is. So I'm going to place the magnet on this side first um, because I just want to make sure it's far enough away from the edge that it won't be exposed when um, when I put my designer paper down. Since we have a deep enough pocket, I don't really have to worry too much about the other side. It's that time of year my hair is falling out in handfuls. Okay, that's in. Now, it doesn't feel very strong. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. There we go. I'll hold that in place. I'm going to wait um, and place the magnet here toward the end. We are going to add a belly band, and I just don't know how wide it's going to be yet. So uh, I got to think about that a little bit more before we place that. So that's good. Now we're ready to um, start laying in our designer papers. This is from the 8x8 collection pack, and this is the flip side of the same pattern, 8x8. Let's see if I've got it. Use my um, contrast sheet so I can see the edge of the pocket better. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Each of these is just under four inches tall, so it's, seven, uh, it's uh, three and seven eighths, which means the top half of it is just a little bit longer than four inches, which means it's gonna fit inside the pocket ever so slightly. When we go to place it in, And it's not a continuous pattern. It must be up and down or something. Anyway, it's gonna. It's not really gonna matter because there's gonna be another um, insert on top of it. it. Doesn't look like I've inked my edges. I guess it take, it helps to get the lid off. Huh, maybe it was just that one side. Just the one side. There we go. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going back and forth on this, guys. I'm trying to make up my mind on whether I want this 
as the pattern or um, or this as the pattern for the insert. I think I'm gonna go with this, it's just a little bit softer. So I'm gonna find another piece, get that trimmed down, then we're gonna cover our inserts. And I'm going to probably um, do some color blocking on here, so I'll be right back. Hey everyone, okay, I lined up my papers for our insert. I went ahead and did one on my own. And we're gonna build the second one together, save you guys a little bit of viewing time. So I cut one inch off the top of the uh, continuous pattern, and that's what's gonna go here. This is um, a strip from the cut apart of the 12 by 12 collection pack. Um, it's somewhere else in the, in the design, but it's off this sheet. And that's what we're gonna use as an accent piece. And it looks like I need to trim that, but we'll get this down first. And that way we can add the second piece and then trim that out exactly for the length. Okay. Mm. I have to tell you what this is from. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I had to look at the scale. That doesn't seem right, does it? I think it seemed kind of small. I'll double check that in just a moment. The hearts seem a little small. Okay. That looks pretty straight. Okay, I need to mark this and trim it. Hmm, I don't see my pencil. There it is. I just looked past it. I'm gonna trim this real quick. Okay, now I'm thinking I might need to trim. Yeah, it looks like I need to trim just a little. No, actually, we're right on. Okay, we can just glue this down after I ink it. Um, nope, I've even done that. Now I'm not covering the back of these at this moment because I've got other pages to cover, so I'm not sure what's gonna be left over, but I'm hoping I can cover both the A and B side of these inserts. We'll see. If not, I mean, it's a really easy, a simple pla oh, place to uh, put some journaling on the back. That's a little tight, but it's gonna be all right. Okay, looks lovely. Okay, these are our, the two inserts for the front. Okay, we've got our magnets already on the inside, so it's time to start planning this next layer. I'm gonna line up my papers, try to get them um, pretty rough cut, if, if not final cut, so that the um, installation process goes uh, pretty quickly for us. I'll be right back. All right, everyone, I've got um, this layout ready to go. I've got it inked, and I think everything's trimmed to fit. So let's get started. Let me get these scraps out of the way, out of our field of vision. It just makes it easier to focus. Okay, so here's what we're going to use for the pockets, and this is from the 8x8 collection, and the um, checkered pattern is from the 12x12 collection pack. I'm just going to go from left to right. Let me make sure I, okay, good. Sometimes I hit the button and if I've got like ink on my the pad of my finger, <laughs> yeah, the iPhone doesn't take it. So I just wanted to make sure we're ready. 
and it looks like we are and I know it's going to be hard to see this because this pattern is going to do funny things with the camera. Okay, after this I mentioned um, come one, come all, and then I don't have another uh, video lined up. I know early, the first quarter of the year is when papers get released from most of our suppliers, vendors. So Chow Bella, Stamperia, and Graphic are probably going to release something January, February. At least that's been the case historically. Um, but if you have something that you'd like to see um, a project done in, let me know in the comments or hop on over to Scrap and Create um, to our website and you can leave a message there, either one. I think this is fun. It kind of looks like spring to me, the colors. It reminds me a little bit of Easter. Okay, there we go. Again, the checkers are from the 12 by 12. The blue floral print is from the 8 by 8 collection. Here we go, and then I've got an insert. I don't have a plan for that yet. We'll get some papers lined up for that soon. I'm looking forward to working on the Come One, Come All. It's gonna be a little different, so. One of my favorite albums of last year was Sir Vagabond and the box that I made. I really enjoyed that. It really, um, I had to stretch artistically. So that was kind of neat. So I'm going to try to do a couple more projects like that. Um, unfortunately, when I do stuff like that, um, my learning curve is a little higher. And learning to do it yourself is one thing, but learning to teach it is, is another. So there's like those two things. Um, but at any rate, I can't get those out quite as quickly. So I'm going to try to mix in a couple of those special projects here and there. Keep it interesting. Oops, that was a little too far. Looks good. Except for the glue. All right. So as a tip for folks that are I know some of you guys really look forward to these uh, tips, um, and I, sometimes they just pop into my head. So lots of you want to get to a point um, where you can do your own designs, and I try to drop hints here and there about my process. So one of the things is I don't, I don't, um, I don't necessarily uh, cut through my design paper in the order in which they appear in the book. What does that mean? It means page one wasn't necessarily built, planned, and covered as the first page in the project. Um, and how I choose which pages to cover first is I go from the most complex page because it has the most elements to cover. So I've got a total of two flaps to cover and the base. And then in addition to that, there's another layer of complexity with, um, with the inserts. Now the inserts themselves aren't difficult, but to select another pattern that goes across and is continuity throughout the whole page um, 
adds that sort of level of complexity. So I take the most complex in terms of the number of um, surfaces to cover um, first because that's going to consume the most amount of paper. Then after I get um, the largest or more, most complex pages covered, then I stop, take a break, and redo my paper planning based on what's left. So that's kind of the process I go through. Um, now this could, it could wind up being page one, but in this case, it's definitely one of the most complex. So regardless of whether I put it at page one or page four, um, it's, one, it's got the heaviest amount of paper usage. So it is something that is gonna get covered first, regardless of where it goes in the book. So that's just something to think about as you're planning your own pages. Um, a lot of times I will design, the, do the flap design um, ahead of you know the paper and um, so then it then I decide where it's going to land in the book later. So uh, I do it both ways. I do it that way, and then I also do it the other way, where I lay the paper out and decide that I want the paper to flow in this particular linear fashion. A good example of that was Aesop's Fables, because there's actually a story there. Um, it has a very linear progression. So I knew I was going to consume the paper um, as it was designed in that sequence because of the story. So it really depends on the paper itself. Um, even though this is Alice, um, there's not a strong story thing to this. The images are strong Alice, but the story's not really there. So I had a lot more flexibility on how to use the patterns throughout the page and throughout the book. So just a little knowledge I wanted to drop on you guys. I'll try to share those um, process bits with you when I think of them. So thanks for tuning in everybody. The next time we get together, we are, um, going to cover the inserts and then we're also going to do the final frontier the inside of this page and then um, i'll have finalized the size of the belly band and then once i do that i can figure out where these magnets are going to go thanks everybody be back soon hey everyone it's daphne and we're going to wrap up on page seven page seven so i've got my papers laid out we're going to use this eight by eight pattern and because we have a span that's nine inches, we're gonna use a one inch strip in the middle and I put my tick marks here and here. So I'm ready to lay that in. And as you can see, I added magnets. We are gonna, part of the reason I held off on the magnets was I didn't know if I was gonna do a belly band. I didn't know if I was doing color blocking and I didn't wanna interrupt or have to shift my magnets around later. So once I decided on this simple strip, which is one inch, then I knew I could put my um, magnets on either side of it. Okay, this is gonna go on either side and they are just a little bit bigger than they need to be. So I'm gonna drag it and mark. It looks like I need to take about a sixteenth of an inch off on this one. And I'm going to mark them independently, just in case the strip didn't go in perpendicular. Let's see how I did. It looks good. So I'm going to ink it and we're going to lay it in. I also, when I went th back through this, I realized I hadn't covered um, some of the pocket inserts, so I've got some paper lined up for that as well. So after we finish this internal layout, then we'll go back to that and wrap that up. Same thing, we're going to mark this. Actually, this one is a little too 
a little more narrow than I wanted it to be. Hmm. And have a little more of a border over here than I wanted. But I have no paper to recut. So basically what I had done is I trimmed these in half at four inches. And because this didn't go in straight, I've got a little bit, little bit of a problem. So you can see I've got a little bit bigger border here. It happens. Oh, you know what? No, I was going to say, maybe this is the paper that goes there. This is going to go here, like so. I'm going to flip through and just make sure that I have I don't have any missing pa um, designer paper that I've covered everything. Which is how I found the two inserts not covered. So here, here, there's the inserts. We're going to use this pattern. Actually, I think I'm going to use this pattern. And I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do that offline. I've got my um, insert papers lined up so you guys know your insert. I told that to you during the build process, but it's three and three quarters by seven and a half, and you need two of those, one for the left, one for the right. That opens again. And then we've got these inserts here. So that's all that's left is to cover these two inserts. And I'm probably going to do the same decorative corners um, with my chopper. Um, and I'm just looking over to see if I've got any other pattern choices. But I think that's what it's going to be on this black cardstock. So it'll be like so. So I'll get those done um, and I'll do them offline. But that's the pattern paper I'm using. Okay, that's it for page seven.